Hello, Diana. <laughs> Hello, Robert. How do you do? Very well, thank you. It's glad to have you come to America. Thank you so much. Um, was is image transformation therapy? Image transformation therapy is a total, totally new psychological approach. There, it's new in two different ways. One is the protocols. The protocols make it so much easier to release intense pain or intense terror so that the person doesn't actually have to feel the pain or terror in order to release it. Because with image transformation therapy, the goal is to release the feeling, not to experience the feeling. We want, that's the whole point. And by using a simple breathing, of, breathing visualization technique, this can be accomplished. And this includes all kinds of feelings, not just pain and terror, but guilt and shame and any other feelings that are what I call embedded in the psychological system. And by releasing those built up feelings, those embedded feelings in the psychological system, the person becomes unburdened by them. They're not there anymore. In IMTT, once you release a feeling, it's gone forever. So if you have intense pain about a particular event and you, you release it using the pain terror release protocol, that pain is released forever. It's gone. It can't come back. With IMTT, the better question is not will it will come back. It's kind of like a splinter. If you had a splinter and you went to remove it, you wouldn't ask, is it going to come back? No, you might ask, did you get it all? But you're not going to ask, is it going to come back? And that's the way it is with image transformation therapy. It does not come back. And that is one of the most surprising things, that the most intense feelings and intense images to intense feelings can be released. And image transformation therapy also has a, another very, really revolutionary approach. The entirely new concepts of what to target and an entirely new concept of psychological dynamics for, that is called the survival model of psychological dynamics. And it's ba and this the model is what is a theoretical model, but it was derived from trying to make sense of experiences in the clinical environment. For example, when dealing with guilt, what I found is that by releasing the pain underneath the guilt, the, pain, the guilt will go away. And the same was true for shame. For shame, it is underneath shame can be pain, terror, or disgust. And whichever that one, whichever one the person identifies as being linked with that shame, when you release it, the shame goes away. Doesn't matter how intense, it's, how intense it is, how long it's been there. You release that underlying feeling, the pain, terror, disgust, and the shame will automatically go away without the person ever having to experience the shame or talk about the shame. So, and the survival model includes many different other aspects in which your which the person which the therapist can identify so that you can figure out exactly what you want to target for release so there's so the, with IMTT you not only have new more effective and efficient protocols for releasing feelings and destroying images but also a much better way of identifying what to target so the person gets very fast an immediate relief. Um, by welchen Störungsbildern uh, hilft Image Transformation Therapy oder kann es heilsam wirken? Image Transformation Therapy is good for all psychological disorders. It's helpful for all. And for many, it can be a complete elimination of the problem. Whether it's depression, anxiety, panic attacks, uh, traumatic memories, OCD, 
these different disorders can usually give, and I forgot, I should say also addictions as well, both um, behavioral addictions and um, substance addictions can be incredibly helpful with IMTT. With behavioral addictions, for sure, you can make that behavioral addiction completely go away. So, for example, a sexual addiction or a gambling addiction addiction can be completely eliminated. Substance addictions, you can help somebody with preventing relapse. And sometimes it also, it also will eliminate the substance addiction itself. So all the basic disorders that m most therapists work with can be either eliminated or fundamentally helped using IMTT. Kannst du mir ein Beispiel geben dafür? A good example of the use of image transformation therapy in a crisis situation was the very first person that I began from whom I began developing image transformation therapy. I had a man, 39 years old, who was suicidal. And when I was working with him, I realized that he was suicidal because of the pain he was experiencing, the emotional pain. And a thought came into my mind, if you could just release the pain, then the suicidal thoughts would go away. And thinking of a breathing visualization technique I learned back in the 60s, I asked him what was the color of that pain. We released it from several points of the body and suicidal thoughts went away. And from that point on, I knew there was something different in terms of what the, developing the IMTT. And that was really the beginning of the development of image transformation therapy. Also, wie lang ist das denn her, dass du das entdeckt hast auf diese Art und Weise, dass quasi IMTT geboren wurde? I first began developing image transformation therapy in 2011 when I worked at the Camp Pendleton Marine Base. I was a specialist in trauma uh, combat um, memories. And I was working with um, Marines coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq. At the time, I was using EMDR, which was the best at that time, but I found it just wasn't good enough for some things. And that's what led me to developing and beginning in 2011, developing image transformation therapy. So by the time I left Camp Pendleton three years later, image transformation therapy had developed where um, it could completely eliminate traumatic memories. And since then, it has continued to develop in terms of panic attacks and depression, and anxiety, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, and many other areas as well. Um, how many sessions are needed for the different disorders and in what intervals to see results, to see healing? Um, wie viele Sitzungen braucht man? um ähm, bei verschiedenen Störungsbildern Therapieeffekte mit IMTT zu sehen, beziehungsweise wie lange braucht es, bis es zur Heilung kommt? There's no set number of sessions necessary. Um, but to give you the range, I worked with a man who had, was having had PTSD from being in a store where a woman came up behind another woman and slit her throat. And this had happened six months before and he was having um, nightmares, intrusive thoughts it, that hit the normal symptoms of PTSD. And within one session, we were able to, he no longer met the criteria for PTSD. We spent three sessions total clearing that memory so it no longer had any impact on him. And For traumatic memories, you, the question is, how do you measure, measure success that it has been processed? Well, in IMTT, the measurement is very simple. Does that memory have the same amount of vividness and, and emotional charge as what the person had for breakfast two days ago? It should be that minimum of a reaction, just 
a memory, oh yes, it happened, it's in my history. If it's anything more than that, there is still more to do. And most single traumatic memories can be processed within a few sessions. Um, in ter but in terms of other kinds of disorders, for example, depression, you can often help with releasing some of the intensity of the depression immediately. And that is also true for anxiety. But depression and anxiety often come from traumatic memories or other memories from a person's past. And so while you can release the burden that they have built up of both depression and anxiety, um, that they, the burden that they built up over the years, uh, you still have to do the underlying work to identify what's causing the person to be depressed. And depression can also be caused, of course, by both the past and why they're not acting in the world in such a way that is enlivening to them. And so those kinds of psychological issues may also need to be addressed. So there's no set number, but people usually notice very fast relief from the beginning, which gives them hope that the therapy will work. Super interessant. Was sind deine Erfahrungen mit Sucht? I started developing a new technique for addiction in 2002 while I was working on my doctorate in psychology. And during that time, I developed what is now known as feeling state treatment. And in feeling state treatment, the dynamic is that there is a positive feeling linked with a behavior, a person, or a substance. And once that feeling gets linked with that person, behavior, or substance, it becomes fixated in the brain. And I discovered that in 2002 and did my dissertation research on that, which was published in 2005. And the feeling state treatment is absolutely fantastic for behavioral addictions sexual addictions, gambling addictions, shopping addictions, shoplifting addictions, any kind of behavioral addictions. It, um, and it also works very effectively for removing the positive component of substance addictions. But for um, there's another component, of course, to addictions, and that's avoidance of feelings, avoidance of depression, avoidance of pain. And that requires the the image transformation therapy, working on releasing pain and or whatever underlying feelings there are in order to eliminate it. But the fascinating thing is, is that behavioral addictions can be totally and completely eliminated, usually within two to three sessions. It's very fast work. And that also includes codependence, which is actually just another form of a feeling state that's affecting a person's life. Which means that, for example, if somebody is suffering from an eating addiction and eats a lot of sweets, for example, after the treatment, he still can eat sweets, but he wouldn't eat that amount like before. That is correct. Um, there is, to the extent that the positive, there's a positive feeling linked with that behavior or that substance. I'll give you an example, an interesting example. I had a woman who had a a um, cookie addiction. She just had to eat cookies. And we were trying to find out what it was, what was the positive feeling that was linked with the cookies and she was having difficulty with it. And I asked her to make up a fantasy. What is, what's happening when she's eating this cookie? And the fantasy was that there were these uh, cartoon character type of figures that were cooking. Um, in America, I don't know if you have this in Germany, but it, the Keebler cookie uh, figures. And they, these cartoon characters are busy having a good time cook, um, around the kitchen and, and um, cooking the cookies. And it turns out that made her feel that she was part of a family. And what happened was she was what we call a latchkey kid. Her... There was nobody home from her home for her when she got home after school. 
And so she would watch the TV and get and f- get this feeling, a feeling that there was a family there by watching this advertisement is what it was. And because she needed to feel that she was connected to a family, it became fixated in her brain. And then we, and she didn't need that anymore in her life. She had a life. She had a family, but it still was there. Because the thing about feeling states is they never go away unless you destroy them. They will stay there and you can fight them, which are usually a losing proposition. But that's why willpower doesn't work with addictions is because the feeling state is still there. And so we eliminate it and it eliminated her cookie addiction. So is a feeling state a little bit something like a positive trauma? That is actually a good way to think about it. Um, Because a traumatic memory is fixated in the brain because of the intense negative feelings. A feeling state memory is fixated because of the intense positive feelings. And that is exactly the right way to think about it in terms of fixation. Both of them, both traumatic memories and feeling state memories, are fixated memories in the brain. So in practice, how does it look like that you're releasing a positive feeling or a negative feeling? How can I imagine this when I was your client? How would the treatment look like? The treatment, um, the protocols are different between traumas and feeling states a bit. With trauma, with traumatic memories, the most, the pain, the terror, whatever other negative feelings are so embedded in the psychological system that people don't even want to think about it, the actual memory. And if they think about it too much, they can become re-traumatized. So you don't want to do that. Instead, I would release the, 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 the pain, the terror, first using a breathing visualization technique for, can, for the pain and terror it's called the pain terror release protocol wie schaut so eine behandlung dann in der praxis aus diese atemvisualisierungsübung die du dann mit den klienten machst the breathing vis- visualization uh, protocol is really very simple it is so simple even a five year old child can do it and i do work with children that young, and so do many child therapists. Matter of fact, children love it because it's fun to do. What it looks like is somebody said that they were in a lot of pain, let's say about their dog dying. And I would ask them, what's the color of the pain? Let's say they say it's red, but it could be any color, whatever it is the person says. I would ask, where do they see that red on their body? Let's say they say it's their chest. And then I would say, breathe into the, into the red in your chest and see the red particles release from your chest. And take several breaths to do this. And when that person is finished, then we go to other parts of the body and work it completely finished until we're completely finished. Um, and at that time, the pain of that of the death of the dog would be just gone. And while usually often one of the problems that occurs when we're dealing with the pain of the death of somebody that you love, is they often don't want to release the pain because it makes them feel connected to the person. But actually the pain makes it hard for them to remember the good times because whenever they start thinking of the person the pain of their death comes up. And so what I tell them and what works and what's true is that if you release the pain, it'll be much better, much easier for you to remember the good times. And that is exactly what happens. They can remember the good times and feel connected to that person that they loved. And how does it work with addictions? Is it similar? Und wie schaut das bei Süchten aus? Ist das ähnlich? Addictions, um, because they don't have 
negative feelings like pain and terror associated with it, you actually work it very differently. And that is that you, if you can, you find the original memory. That is, what was the first time it happened where it felt that overwhelming, that in super intense positive feeling? But if they can't get the the first time, any intense time can be useful can be used. And we don't now people can become um, people don't want to feel people want to feel the feeling, but they often don't want to feel the feeling. They don't want to feel the feeling because they don't want to give in to the addiction. But and they may have been trying to control it, but they do like that feeling. And they don't want to let it go away a lot of times. Can, they can be reluctant. Um, the way to deal with this is that they have that memory of when that event occurred and that positive feeling. And they see that memory in front of them and the positive feeling that's linked, that's in that image, that time. Let's say it's a feeling of belonging. Let's say you have somebody who has who been smoking and what they, and they have a feeling of belonging linked with smoking cigarettes. You would ask, what is the color of that feeling of belonging in the image, in the memory? And then drain the color out of that image to the floor, soak it into the earth. And then turn the image or that memory into tiny little particles and see it destroyed and then redo that until the person cannot re-image that memory again. And that would, that's the major focus of doing that, even though there's more to do, to com completely release it. Wow, das klingt so einfach. Funktioniert IMTT für jeden oder gibt es Menschen, bei denen das nicht funktioniert oder nicht so gut funktioniert? The people who, well, for image transformation therapy, in general, um, I have found very few people who can't do image transformation therapy, can't do the protocols. Um, there have been a few. And, and it's not just about whether you have good visualization skills, because you can use other approaches. There are others. You can use um, auditory uh, sensations. You can use kinesthetic so that it's not just about being able to visualize. Some people are more auditory inclined. And so we use, say, the pain terror release protocol in using um, a kind of auditory approach to it instead that the person does. Um, but um, most people, probably 97, 98% of everybody you're working with can do image transformation therapy. And as I said, even children as young as five years of yeah, five years of age can do it. Wie viele IMTT, um, wie viele IMTT Therapeuten gibt's denn bereits? Wo in der Welt ist das verbreitet? Und wie viele Patienten wurden wahrscheinlich schon damit behandelt? Uh, I have taught about 250 therapists uh, around the world. Um, I have taught image transformation therapy in Australia as well as England and France. Um, I have people have, however, I have on-demand learning and people have been taking my courses from many other countries. Um, the number of patients who have been helped is certainly in probably in the thousands or tens of thousands by now. Wie kann man IMTT learn? Why do I add another T? For those people who are interested in learning image transformation therapy, you can take my on-demand online course. Um, I have three workshops for the basic certification. That includes the feeling state uh, treatment workshop, which is the third one. Um, image transformation therapy has a very gentle learning curve. After just the very first workshop, you can begin to use IMTT with your clients. 
and you can release the most intense pain and terror and destroy traumatic memories so they no longer b bother people after the very first workshop. And the more experience you have, then you can start and take, you can take the advanced workshop and get more effective and even more efficient ways of working with um, the psychological issues people are bringing to you. Das klingt alles so wahnsinnig einfach. Ist IMTT ausschließlich medizinischem Personal, Psychologen, Psychotherapeuten vorbehalten? Oder gibt es auch eine Möglichkeit für Lehrer oder andere Menschen, die mit Menschen arbeiten, IMTT zu erlernen und dann anzuwenden? Um, the, the many, some of the protocols, like the pain terror release protocol, are useful for everyone to know. Um, you do not need to be a therapist to release emotional pain or to release fear. So that the basic protocols, because they're so easy, anybody can use it. Where you need a therapist to be involved is when you're dealing with fairly severe disorders that require more training and understanding the psychological dynamics. The, as I said, IMTT has a very gentle learning curve, but the concepts are really important. IMTT puts enormous, puts the burden of therapy on the therapist. Once the client can do, you know, can do the protocols, and I said most people can, then it's up to the therapist to understand the concepts so that you really understand what you need to target in order to eliminate the psychological problems that the person is having. And so um, anybody, any lay person can be can benefit enormously from just learning the pain to do the pain terror release protocol and it can help their life immeasurably. But for more complex psychological issues, it requires somebody who really understands the concepts of the survival model. Wow, heißt das, man kann es auch an sich selbst anwenden? The answer is yes. As a matter of fact, it's very useful. Um, now, anybody, including a therapist who is having, has Major, a major psychological issue, you probably are going to want to get some help because everybody has blind spots. Everybody can't see what they need what from the outside would be so obvious. So even the therapist is going to need some help to get through some of their more difficult issues. But most IMTT therapists do do the protocols on themselves and get a lot of benefit from it. When I was in the seventh grade, and I went through a period of being bullied at that in that grade because I was small, and that the pain of that bullying had stayed with me for decades. And one time I realized that was what was bothering my life, and. So I did the pain terror release protocol on the pain of being, being bullied. And from that point on, the issues I was having in regards to that were just gone. And we're talking about, it took all of 15 minutes for me to do that. Was ist ein Fallbeispiel, das dir ganz intensiv im Kopf geblieben ist, weil die Effekte so toll waren, wo du mit IMTT gearbeitet hast? There's actually so many, but I will relay one that I actually use in my trainings. A um, Marine veteran um, contacted me about five years after I left Camp Pendleton. And um, he'd been referred to me because of my work at Camp Pendleton. And he was suicidal. His, one of his Marine buddies had just killed himself the week before. And he was very concerned that he was going to kill himself. He had 
taken all his guns and given to his father. Um, but his life was falling apart. He was not functioning well. He had a job, but he was not able to function well. His wife, wife uh, wanted to separate from him and was separated at the time. And um, he was he was pretty much on his last legs there. Um, so what we did was the first thing we did in the first session was release the pain of what he was going through. And then because I understand about combat and what happens in combat, I know that people freeze in combat. And we released the frozen reaction he had from combat eight, nine years earlier. And that freeze had been affecting, that, freeze, that frozen sensation had been affecting all his life and making it very difficult for him to do anything, even though he was, he, he was, it just made it difficult for him to function. And so we released that frozen sensation from his psychological system. First the pain, then the frozen. And that was the end of the first session. In the second session, his, all his suicidal thoughts were gone. And he was beginning to feel that he could be, that he was more effective. He was able to start getting more done. And in the second session, we focused on his, uh, the pain about the loss of his wife because he felt like he couldn't, ha it was every time he thought about her leaving him and, and, and not having, not being with his children, it was just extra extraordinarily painful. So we processed that and um, some other issues in regards to his wife. And that was the second session. And by the third session, he was doing so much better than he had been. Um, his work, he had become much more effective at work. He was no longer suicidal. And I asked him, well, what do you want to work on? He said, well, fireworks. It was almost July 4th. And in America, July 4th is our Independence Day where we shoot off all kinds of fireworks. And he was going to go visit his family for July 4th. So we processed his reactions to fireworks. And um, that actually was the end of his treatment. And, but I did, we did get together a few weeks after he uh, had gotten after the fireworks. And it turned out he had done very well. Um, he previously, he had, he had had to uh, just basically hide from the fireworks. He would just go into his room, put some music on, headphones, and just avoid it entirely. And this time, he was actually able to go out with his children and enjoy the fireworks. Uh, um, I had an email. I've had several emails from him over the last few years. And he's just telling me how, how well he is doing in life. Got to get back together with his wife and everything is just going well. And I actually, that is in the, um, the first workshop, the first video that I show because it is, it really shows what IMTT can do and do it so well and easily. Wow, da kriege ich Gänsehaut, wenn ich das höre. So schön ist das. Um. Image transformation therapy utilizes some simple breathing visualization protocols that allow a person to release the most intense feelings so that they no longer bother them again. And Other protocols release and, and clear out the intensity and vividness of the memories of trauma. And it makes it much easier to, by, re, by releasing those feelings, other feelings from other times, other memories begin to emerge for also easy processing so that memories and traumas that people have had may not remember or have had just just buried as much as they possibly can become much easier to process 
um, because they're no longer as intense as they used to be. Kann man mit INTT Bindungsstörung behandeln? Attachment disorders, any, any dynamic that occurs in, in a person's life creates feelings and sensations in the person's psychological system. And attachment disorders um, are really the same. So if a person is feeling an anxious attachment, you can identify that anxiety and you can release it. So that, or if they're feeling abandoned, you can release that feeling and that sensation related to that abandonment. Because what makes attachment a, a problem for people where they get close to someone and then their walls go up is that they are, there's a reflection, they're, they're, the idea that there's going to be pain there or a feeling of emptiness or not existing can be, um, start to be activated by having a relationship with somebody. And one of the, uh, one of the misconceptions in therapy is that if you have an absence of something, you can fill it up. So let's say a person feels emptiness. And so the idea of emptiness is that let's fill it up. You have an empty bucket, let's fill it up with water. The problem is the feeling of emptiness is not actually empty. It is a presence. It is a feeling that is in your psychological system. You cannot clear out a feeling by putting another feeling in there. So no matter how much love you give somebody, the emptiness is not going to go away. It may soothe it, it may tamp it down, but that feeling of emptiness will not go away. With image transformation therapy, using the protocols, you can release that feeling of emptiness. And what that means is the person does not need to be filled up with love. They don't need to try and make up for what they didn't get. Now they can actually have a relationship from an adult standpoint because people do want to be loved and to love, but they're not trying to fill up and make up for past issues. I love that. Um, 